Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, wire up the X icon in the top right hand corner and also make it so it runs exactly the same code that the exit button is running. So you have to have two exit uh, paths through your code. Okay, um, so when, it, when the user clicks this, in this case, I'll get a dialog and they can cancel it, not exit, or they can cancel it and go, okay, I'll exit that. Okay, or else they can click the, ex the exit button. And the same thing happens. It's exactly the same code running, the same method is running. And I'm going to use an interface to do that. So uh, a nice neat little trick so that we can get used to working with interfaces, which is a nice thing to do. So this is the interface, iExitable, which is just a name we've made up. And um, it's going to help us with exiting our application. X icon and exit button. And if we've got multiple scenes, we can, we can wire up the exit button for all of them to the same method. So we might have five scenes, 10 scenes or whatever. And they could all run this exit button when the user clicks, clicks X. Okay, so stay tuned and hope it's useful. Thanks for watching. So with our code the way it stands, something's not right. Okay, when we click the exit button, that's fine. The exit handler runs. The exit handler, which is in our main scenes uh, document controller. Okay, so it's this code here that runs. Exit button. So it's that code there that runs. Okay. But when we click the little X icon in the top right hand corner, that doesn't run. And we can prove it by putting a message in here, system.out.println. Okay, so we put a print line message in the exit button handler now. So when we run our app and click the exit button, we get the message, beautiful, exiting application. So we get that coming out, that's beautiful. What happens when we click the little X icon? We don't get any message. So the pathways through the code for exiting are different, depending on whether you click a button, because you run the button handler, or click the little X icon, okay? And um, so if you wanted to display a dialogue before letting the user exit, uh, you know, are you sure you want to exit? Um, you'd have to put the dialogue here, and how would you find out where to put the dialogue um, for the X icon? Where would that go? Okay, so a bit of a mystery there, isn't there? Um, and again, in Java, like with everything in Java, there's many ways you can do it. Um, uh, I'll probably show you, I'll show you probably one of the most straightforward ways that makes it easier. Okay, so let's look at that. So the way I've decided to show you is by using an interface, which is using something we've, we've been taught and we need to start using to become comfortable with these things. So I've got a little bit of code here I'll show you, and I'll paste it in, and it's an iExitable. So it's an interface called iExitable, and uh, I've changed the package so it matches our package, so we're all good to go for that. And this is an interface, and it's actually got a method in it, and the method is called ExitClick. So in other words, when the user calls the ExitClick, whenever, whenever this ExitClick method's called, it's going to display a dialog. You can display, display dialogs many many ways in Java. One was with via alerts. The other way is with confirmation dialogs. J option pane show uh, show show confirmation dialogs. Um, alerts are probably the more up to date way for uh, for uh, Java FX. Okay, and then what we do here is we we show the dialog and wait for a response. Okay, and if the user clicks the OK button, then we exit. Okay. Platform.exit, rather than system.exit, which is really the old way to exit applications anyway. So we're going to go into the new way to exit, so we'll go platform.exit, and that exits the application. So what we, ne what we need to do now is make it so the exit button calls this method, and make it so the top right hand corner X icon, when we click that, it calls this method as well. So all paths lead to this method. Okay, so let's do that. So the, that's the interface. So what we're going to do is make it so that uh, a couple of our classes implement that interface. So any, anything with an exit button or anywhere we want the user to be able to exit with the X icon. Okay, so uh, let's start with the, uh, the exit button, which is in our main, uh, our main scenes controller. So we want to put a implements, not just, not just initializable, but also comma, I exitable. So now we're implementing that interface as well. Okay. So we can now use those interface, and if it contains any methods, like this one, this, this interface does contain some methods that are that are developed and implemented. So we can now call those methods from any method in this class because it implements the XML interface. 
Okay. And also um, on our on our main menu. Well, actually, we'll come on to that shortly. Okay, so on our, on our main application that starts up, that's our student admin app. We know that's that because it's, it matches our package name, but that package name's all lowercase, so student admin app. That's that's what Java actually runs, like we said earlier. And uh, and this loads our main menu, or our main scene, which is our, 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 our menu with our buttons on it, our, our screen with our buttons on it. So this, this is what kicks off our application. This start, this start method kicks off our application. This is the thing that's run once when the application first starts. So in here, I could pop a little bit of code. Um, so I'm, 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 for our stage object, I'm calling set on close request, and I'm passing an event to that. And the event's going to do two things, or, or run two, two lines of code. It's going to run the exit click method that we just saw in the I, I, uh, I exitable interface. And it's also going to run event.consume. And I'll explain that in a second. The first thing we've got to do to make this so it's not going to give us a, comp a compiler error or error is we're going to implement the iExitable as well. iExitable up there. Exitable, not editable. Exitable. Sorry, that shouldn't be extends. It should be that sh it should be implements. Implements. The other class had implements. This one has extends for application and implements are extendable. Okay. So now we can run this exit click, which is the method in this other exitable method, exitable class. That's that's run. And if the user chooses not to exit, then we've got to get rid of that exit event from the from the Java queue, and we do that with event.consume. So if this if this event exit click doesn't exit the application, then we need to consume the event to make sure it's not going to be interpreted again or used again somewhere against us and <laughs> you know, hanging around in the queue and making things dirty. Okay, so there's two lines of code there. I've got an open curly bracket there and a closing curly bracket. So we're using a lambda here to help us link up this code. We could call a method with this code in it, but I've just used a lambda there because we should start using lambdas as well. We've done lambdas in, in our class. Uh, lots of times. So here I'm using lambda. Often we linked up lambdas to buttons. Um, so I said um, my button dot add action listener event and then a, and then a method name and that uh, that would make the the, the the method run when the button was clicked. Okay. Here we're just doing sli something slightly different. We're linking up the the on close window event to uh, to this bit of code. Okay. So uh, when that little X icon's clicked, a, a window event triggers. A close a closing window event triggers. And, uh, and so this code here will automatically run these two lines of code. And uh, so the exit click method will run, pop up the dialog. And if the user doesn't exit, in other words, we don't, we don't perform that platform.exit method, then our application will keep running. And it will return here and consume the event so that the application doesn't exit. And that, and that, uh, that exit event isn't hanging around in our queue making things polluted. <laughs> okay, so it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but she's got to wire these things up in a certain way and we're just trying to make use of all the Java that we've learned so far so interfaces and uh, lambdas and, and and things like that okay uh, so let's go back to our um, exit method over here and instead of calling system on exit zero what we want to do is call our exit method ex exit click method okay and we implement ex our exitable so we can just call that directly that method's already implemented, so we don't need to provide another implementation for it. We just say, I'll comment that one out, this.exit click. Okay, and I'll get rid of that message. I'll move that message into the exit click as well. Okay, so now when we click our, our exit button, the exit button handler runs, and the exit click method runs, which is the exit click in this I exitable. Okay. Uh, and I'll put a message here. Okay, so exiting application, and then I'll go platform.exit. So that's the better way to do it for a, a Java X application rather than system.exit zero. Okay, let's see how that goes. So now our X icon and exit button should do the same bit of code. It should be this bit of code here popping up in the, the dialog. Okay, so exit. 
do you want to exit? Are you sure? I'll go cancel. So I didn't exit and the event was consumed because we didn't exit the application. I'll click it again, cancel. So we're good, it's good to go. I'll click OK this time. And the, and the application exits cleanly. Let's also run the, run the exit button and exit, cancel, exit, and I'll go OK this time. And you'll see the exit application comes out again. And it's the same dialogue. So this exact same case is now running for both exit button and a little X icon. Okay. So that, that, that's, that's one way to do it. There's other ways to do it as well. Um, using the interface is probably, it's, it's a nice clean Java way to do it, I think. Okay, so that's why I, I recommend students do as well. Hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Okay, and also before I go, I've got to update the version number. Otherwise, people will be complaining in the comments. <laughs> update that to nine. <laughs> Save that and exit. And just update our control. We don't need to update our control, but I always do when I come back from a scene edit anyway. Uh, but that's all good. So now we should have version 0 .9, 0 0.9 in there. One thing I will show you, just in case people were worried, is um, before we go, is this this uh, student admin app. This is our main method that kicks off our application. Okay, extends application. So this is the one that generates the the frame, so the, 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 the window with the icons in the top and the title bar, okay? So it generates a frame. All these other ones are just scenes, okay, that live inside that frame. So the frame resizes to fit the scene, okay? And uh, so when we uh, when we change over to display students and I click the X icon, the same dialogue's gonna run because it's still the same window that's in, in, in force here. We've changed scenes, but we haven't changed applications or frames. The frame is still the main frame that we created back in here and now, student admin app when it kicked off. Okay, so that X icon is still the same code that's running. Okay, so um, the, the student has the option from to exit from, or the, the, the user has the option to exit from any of these dialogues. Okay, I didn't have to go and wire those X icons up. It's just this one X icon I wired up in the, here by that by that, that, that little bit of code wide up all the x icons all the single x icon for multiple scenes okay so this is what i pointed out before i go um hope the video is useful thanks for watching have a nice day